I came up in a tradition of resistance and rebellion and revolution. My father was a Black Panther. He instilled in me certain values um, that were always uh, self-love, love of African, and resisting oppression, um, always about justice. Uh, his trajectory, so to speak, was always um, resisting and getting out in the street as a Black Panther. He came to a place where he had to leave the Panthers, where it became, um, he wrote a letter to the Panthers, the powers that be um, within the uh, organization that was um, anti-misogynist and talking about the misogyny that took place in the Panthers. This coincided with the arrival of me and my birth. And he realized also at that time, the Panthers were being persecuted and being suppressed and being locked up, being murdered. This is comes in off the heels of the assassination of Fred Hampton, um, the exile of, uh, or the rest of Bobby Seale and Huey and all those guys. This, this is my day, day to day. I grew up with this always. So he felt it was time to leave that whole thing alone and focus on raising a family. And in that raising a family, when I came up, it was always Africa first, or um, Yoruba, and my name is Yoruba. We learned a certain way how to view this world, especially as African people. For example, Puerto Himplo. I had a giant picture of Malcolm X, life size, on one side of my living room. And then on the other side was Ho Chi Minh. And this is how I grew up, with honoring Malcolm X and Ho Chi Minh, and the idea of socialism and African pride. Um, it was a big uh, deal in my household. So I, we always learned how to recognize African countries. We learned Yoruba words. My name is a Yoruba name. And I don't know if you know what Yoruba is, but it's a, a people in Nigeria. So in any case, um, this was a real strong uh, motivator in my life. As I got older, um, went to school, high school, I came and followed my father's footsteps and went into the movement, so to speak. I joined various groups. I led different protests, helped lead different protests. I spoke in front of people. When I was out in the street, at first it felt like I was following my father's footsteps, but it became something when you start to see where will I end up in the same place where my father did, where this that martyrdom, or that really, not even that martyrdom, but for my father, what I saw was that bitterness and that anger, that feeling of being defeated, that feeling of not um, being powerless. This whole thing rests on power, always. That is a political axiom. In any case, to see him go through that and when I'm out there and I felt like I started seeing um, that depression for me where I could see people not really paying attention to the struggle and seeing people um, also powerless. It, it became really depressing. It takes a toll on you. So I had to find a way out of it. I remember a Pacific story where we were in the struggle and we were fighting Columbia University. And we were fighting to keep the Autobahn Borough intact because that was where Malcolm X was assassinated. And they wanted to make it into a bio center, chemical, blah, 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 blah. But we fought and resisted. But I remember going on stage and I remember holding rallies and seeing uh, people taking photographs, the cops taking photographs off of rooftops. And I remember riding back home in a car and remember seeing unmarked cars riding alongside of us. I remember Rodney King and the whole city got shut down. I don't know if people remember that. You gotta be an old head, I guess, now. But I remember having a rally then, and I remember the police provoking us to fight and resist. And I remember a, a white man, policeman, putting a gun in my face. I only had a gun put in my face three times in this life. All three were white men, but two of those were policemen, and they definitely meant harm. Can I sustain that? Or is there another way to do this thing? And so I chose teaching because I felt like teaching was a way that I can impart who I am and still be who I am because I feel in this society 
they force a lot of us to conform and lose that part of who you are to fit in that little keyhole called whiteness. I don't like fitting in that keyhole. So any case, um, I started teaching and that was a way for me to uh, negotiate the two halves of myself, so to speak. I still wanna stay intact, but I wanna find a way to be in the system, to disrupt the system, to um, change the system. So I felt t being a teacher was the best way to go about that. So I learned to bring myself into this community. I learned to still talk about Africa. I learned to still talk about justice and not just justice for me. Again, when you're serving justice, yo, you are serving justice for everyone. This is the thing that people keep forgetting. When I'm talking about my justice, yo, it will serve everyone. That's how it goes. For example, my father was bringing up that misogyny. He was talking about all people. So I included women. That is the way it shall be. Any case, I did not want to end up like my father. And I wanted to be able to sustain myself in this thing called the struggle. I still want to make a contribution. I always felt and I always tell people, each and every one of us can contribute in some way to bettering the lives of people on this earth. We all can contribute in some way. None of us are that powerless. We all have ability to contribute in some way. And so I felt this is my way to contribute um, through teaching, uh, working with adults, um, working with this administration. Um, I also contribute.